here's a tent city. These are people, uh, this guy wants to fix Flint. Yeah, you know what, first we have to fix Syria. <laughs> this is nice, all right, let's talk to these people. This is fantastic. Fix Flint, when are you, losers gonna fall in law? Oh, that's right, no, nope. look at this. It's a regular lefty, get no hate. Up to uh, it's up to us. No bell, no no to both parties of war, racism and capitalism. Brandon Jones, ooh, that's I don't know. He must be uh, somebody who got killed. Black Lives Matter. No fracking. Unite for humanity. Oh look, I see this. A uh, lot of stuff. He's right. It's both parties. That's the problem. When are you going to lose in the fall line? Mainstream news media. Fix Flint. We're gonna fix Flint. As soon as we fix Mosul. Iraq, and uh, but nobody's here. Okay, so this is, a, I don't know, so these are protesters, I guess they're staying overnight. This is smart because hotel rooms are going for about $600. <laughs> and uh, this this tent, actually much nicer and cleaner than the days in I was in, <laughs> which was a shithole, by the way. And I left, they wouldn't give me my money back, I still can't stay there. But uh, you can't, they give you, they give you a complimentary uh, at the Days Inn where I'm staying. They give you a complimentary penicillin shot when you check in, which is nice. They, they're thinking about you anyway. So what has been your takeaway from the two days that you've been here? Anything, uh, what's been your impression? It's, it's just been great to see this many people out here. Uh, just this many passionate people, like not just immediately dissolving and going home. And the fact that people came all the way out here and are, are, are staying and and making their voices heard is like re really cool. It's really good energy out here and everybody's having a good time. Are you a Democrat? I don't, I guess, yeah, legally. <laughs> I know. Until I get back online and, and, and go independent again or yeah. Green Party or something. Yeah, so what is it about the Democratic Party? Is there anything the Democratic Party could do to get your vote this November? I mean, as far as the top of the ticket, Hillary Clinton. Yeah, like dismantle it completely, you know. Um, like uh, stop accepting corporate donations of all kinds, uh, you know. You think uh, that's the root of the evil in both parties, the corporate money? Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, it's like uh, that's how this corruption isn't corruption without uh, you know corporate sponsors. So, and so, do uh, you think there's any way what uh, to get the money out of politics, or do you think we need an, uh, a constitutional amendment? Um, I don't know. Overturning Citizens United, of course, is is the first step. Uh, Outside of that, I guess if, it, if it's left up to the person, I think I just don't think anybody should vote for anybody that takes money from sponsors because that's not representing us. Yeah. What's your doggy's name? Biscuit. Hey, Biscuit. Biscuit, this is Duke. Hey, Duke, how are you? They don't give a shit about me. Oh, he don't give a shit about much of anything, man. That dog is mad. Uh, so what is your what is your name? Uh, Amber. Hey, Amber, where are you from? Um, I came here from Asheville, North Carolina. Oh, really? Fantastic. Now, what uh, what's been your experience the last two days? It's been really it's been really peaceful. It's been really a lot of community building and connection. Um, there's been a lot of disappointment now with Bernie yesterday and conceding and kind of giving in. And there's um, still just this general sense of moving forward, though. So that's been really nice to see. Yeah. So uh, even though Bernie, you feel. Uh, do you think he's sincere when he's telling his followers that uh, to vote for Hillary Clinton? I think that Bernie Sanders recognizes that his followers are a force and now they're a force that feels a little bit lost. And I think that he's making a play at trying to keep the peace by just giving in and working within the system to be like, okay, well, you know, we, we did all that stuff and yeah, we did say burn or bust, but let's not bust too hard, you know? So. Yeah. So, do you think that uh, uh, there'd be a much of a difference between a Trump presidency or a Clinton presidency, or or do you think one would be more destructive, or how do you look at it? I think that one of the bigger differences that we're going to end up running into between the two presidencies is the perception globally. Um, I, I'm not necessarily a Hillary supporter, I'm definitely not a Trump supporter, but I feel if we have to pick between the two that globally we'll be able to maintain some level of respect in picking Hillary Clinton as to where with Trump it's just like, it's Donald Trump, like he's a joke. You know, you know when I looked at you I said there's a Hillary voter right there, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't quite say that, but I also am, I'm, I'm trying to keep my options open and kind of see where it goes. Um, Are you frustrated with the choices? 
I am. I'm very frustrated. I stood out at the fence and people were screaming. And the thing that I was screaming is don't make us choose between the lesser of two evils. Um, and I feel that Bernie had a lot of movement towards we could have the peaceful revolution and the large changes that we need to have in this country through him. Um, and now that we don't have, now that that figurehead isn't there, it's kind of, I hope that people still remain aware of the fact that those changes still need to be made and we need to figure out how to make them. What about Jill Stein? Jill Stein's a very interesting variable. She doesn't have a lot of experience, but at the same time she says a lot of good things. Um, so it's kind of, she's definitely somebody to watch, if not in this election cycle, then in the next one. I think that we really need as a nation to make a push towards a multi-party system outside of our two parties and we have one we have the green party we have options but we don't take those options so many people look at it as oh you're throwing your vote away if you don't vote republican or democrat and i feel that that's going to be one of the giant factors that really helps to change the country into a more um inclusive and more ideas being thrown around than this like we have these ideas or we have these ideas and you get no other options than that okay, and, and so uh, when it comes to november you're going to be a pragmatic voter you think i'm not sure what's going to happen in november i'm going i'm not going to be voting with the thrill that i would be voting if i was voting for bernie sanders for sure so it's going to be a um it's going to be an interesting couple. Well, what would be the is, there, is there one thing that Hillary Clinton could do to make sure you vote for her? Not really. <laughs> it's really one of those. I, I, I Some people say frack if she came out against fracking or made a commitment in the platform against TPP or something like that. I'm unfortunately, I and I hate to say it, but I am one of those people, like, I feel that if Donald Trump was elected, he would push back so much of the civil things right. that we have gone through that I probably will be one of the people that votes for. I don't have the, like, either Bernie or nobody, like, I still believe that I have to vote. Um, but I also have started coming to the point of not sure how much that vote really does matter. I feel that Hillary is pretty much lined up to do it at this point. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Tell me your name again. Amber. That's the power of Donald Trump. Donald Trump can turn those people into Hillary Clinton voters.